Thanks for watching. I'm Captain Larry Bell. Ayers Point, over here in San Antonio Bay, all the way down Cottonwood Bayou, past Cottonwood Bayou, all these back lakes are all back in here. Man, we've had these big moving tides here the last few days. Lots of water pushing out of here, super low tides. These become your points of emphasis when the conditions are like this. A lot of this stuff, this, you can't get to some of them because it's just so shallow. So what you're going to have to do is drop your boat and walk into some of these areas. If you have uh, maybe a V-boat or a heavy boat or something of that effect and don't have a cat boat or a flats boat of some sort. But anyway, these areas with these big back lakes, uh, these drains and everything that dump out into San Antonio Bay, all the way down to, to Panther as well. There's a bunch of these little mouths up and down this particular shoreline here in the San Antonio Bay area. So what you want to be able to do is get in these guts, and when that water really, really is dropping out of there like we've had the last few days, is get in there and fish them. If it, you work all different kinds of baits that are in there. We're, again, we're in, in our transition from the full moon into the new moon, when, and we will be into that new moon later this week. So uh, aggressively size up your baits. You know, throw supermodels, throw corkies, throw soft dines, throw... Uh, marker 54 mullet run, jerk shrimp, any of that stuff. Be aggressive with what you're going to throw because these fish are going to be pretty active. Uh, like I say, this water is going to start coming back a little bit. But when you get into these guts, work all these different style of baits and see what they want. See if they want a fat profile, see if they want a lighter profile, see if they want a larger bait, see if they want a medium-sized bait, whatever. And uh, color-wise, just kind of match what your color is of the water. If it's dirtied up a little bit, you may want to throw uh, something with an orange, white, or chartreuse tail in there to kind of help make that bait stand out for they can locate that thing. Get back in some of the... Now, some of the lakes you won't be able to get to because there is not enough water to, uh, to really weight it. But if you can find some knee-deep to calf-deep water, that's going to be your, your sweet spot. All those types of areas like that, especially up and down here, lend that to you. You can get in there. You can throw topwater baits in here, and you can really stay away from that grass. The Double D is another great bait in that particular scenario. Uh, you can get work it above that grass line. If you're really good with working plastics, you can put keep the 16-ounce jig head on there for at least two more months before you want to switch over to an eighth ounce. Uh, the 16th ounce allows you that time frame for that bait to really float and work in that water column, especially when you have a small water column to do that with. So uh, it gives you plenty of opportunity for that bait to hang in there for those fish to find it and locate it and get an opportunity to catch those fish. Uh, that said, continue. The majors and minors have been spot on the past few weeks. Uh, make sure that you're incorporating those into your fishing days. If you're not, you're doing yourself a disservice because those things are really they really work well uh, if you pay attention to them, track them, see what's going on with the fish. It will it will help you be a little bit more productive throughout your fishing day. Spalding Bite, again, another one of the great areas that are down in here. These back lake mouths that dump out here into the big area out front. Uh, when the water levels are good, get back in the back lakes and work those areas. Get your top water bait, work those all back up in that grass that's back there. You got shale that's back in there. Great opportunities to have up and down that area. All the way out here to the point to the fingers. Again, these last few days, you know, with the tides that we've had, there's been super low tides. Uh, some of these have fished differently. The guts have been the primary location for you to, to work. Same thing that said back there in Spalding. The mouths of those have been good. Out front have been good. Out in the bigger area, so you can weight it normally. Uh, it's like, you know, thigh deep water. All that area, there's been really good opportunities to find some, some nice redfish that, that are schooling up back in there. Uh, some scattered drum, maybe an occasional flounder. We have come across all in that area, these opportunities when this water drops out to do that. Work these, these fingers in here, all the way up here to the cut through that goes into Carlos that takes you up there. All these little edges down the down these shell banks and all that stuff, they, there's guts that are all in that stuff, so it gives you an opportunity to do that. If you want to hop over the opening here and get onto this side over here close to Dunham, that's part of the old ICW from long ago, so there's a real deep edge that's on that. So you can work down that lot of shell. Make sure that your boat's well anchored because... Winds pop up down in here in this area, it'll, it'll dirty up on you, but at the same time, if the boat's not anchored, it'll start floating away on you. So make sure that you got a good anchor that's in there or your power poles are set really well when you fish this particular area. 
fish down this edge, again, with the water levels being super low, this, this fish is differently. So you want to fish off these edges down in this gut uh, all the way down and get back up on this flat here. There's a bunch of scattered shell there, some good mud and grass. There's been a decent amount of bait that's been working there. Uh, main things that's been primary for me in this has been uh, down south burn, uh, burner shads in uh, Supernatural, Purple Rain, uh, Chicken of the Sea have been good. Uh, the Supermodel in the same flavors. Uh, your Miradine, Soft Dine, whatever you like, Double Ds, any of this stuff is in play right now. It's all been pretty productive. Uh, nothing that really stands out more than anything else as far as catching majority fish on one particular bait or the other, but it's been just been kind of a group effort. Uh, you know, you change out, you caught two or three fish on this, let's try this, then you catch one or two on that. So it's just kind of been that kind of uh, pattern. But continue to work all these areas in here. Uh, again, majors and minors, paying attention to your weather, what's going on, because all this area here can become kind of treacherous for you if you're not paying attention to the weather. But work it, be patient with it. Uh, locate some bait working in here. Have some fun throwing some different style baits if you haven't done that. So, like I say, we got the new moon approaching, and there should give some really good opportunity to find some fish in this area. All the area up in here, Newcomb, Newcomb Point, all the way down to the front up here to the point there, close to Lap Reef, back around into Newcomb Bend. All this area in here, back around all the way as you go back up toward Holiday Beach. Great area. Sets up a couple of different ways for you. We've had some funky winds the last few days so this is one of these types of areas that you can get up here and if you got a north breeze is kicking it's you know on Newcomb Point side the, the Copano Bay side there it becomes pretty protected for you so you don't have to worry about too much and then if you got south southeast breeze which is pretty much predominantly what we have and fish are probably going to have a lot of here pressing forward the back side here becomes in play for you so both areas they give you different opportunities. So on the point side or Copano Bay side, closest to the bridge, all that area up front, you can work all that. You've got great, great guts, little potholes, satellite grass pockets everywhere that are up and down this shoreline. Got just a little bit of everything that gives what fish want. You got an edge that's further out. Been throwing down south either regular versions or the supermodels in both the Chicken of the Sea, Magic Grass, uh, Purple Rain, Bone Diamond, White Ice, any of those have been good. This water up here, it can get stained on you when the wind is really super blown out at southeast. But if you've got something, again, I mentioned earlier, if you got something that's got like a white tail, chartreuse tail, or an orange tail, that would be uh, like uh, the uh, Down South Fire Tiger has that orange tail on there. So it's kind of got a little bit darker green, a little bit silver fleck in it. So it's got that orange tail. So that would be a good choice for something to that effect. Same can be said on the back side there in Newcomb Bend. You got mud, you got guts, you got back lake mouths that dump out in there. All these areas here have been places where we found a few redfish, some scattered trout. A lot of, a lot of the trout that we're finding is, is in that you know, 13, 14, 15 inch range, not finding a whole lot in the new slot size of the 17 to 23 just yet. Pick one up here, pick one up there, but not in great numbers, not yet. Uh, I'll look for that increase as we continue to move into the springtime and as, as that spawn begins to start happening, if it's not already happening, we're starting to see a few little things here and there that are indicating that these fish are starting to get up on grass beds and starting to lay. So water temps are starting to escalate as we've had warmer weather. So that's all going to be something to take in consideration. Get your topwater baits out and get fresh hooks on them as you're going to have opportunities to catch trout and redfish up in some of these shallow flats, up against these grass shorelines and these back lake mouths. Uh, if, you, if you're not a, a big topwater bait chunker, then just, just play with it for one day. Just try it out. Because, man, there are some great opportunities when that happens. It's a lot of fun to watch those redfish and trout come and explode up on the top of that topwater bait. Uh, and it also can be used as a searcher bait. So you get blow-ups, blow-ups, but no takes. Tie that double D on, tie that mirror dine on, the soft dine, and work those baits just below the surface that lends that bait down in, inside those redfish and trout eyes there so they can get their eyes on it and get after it. Uh, look for your bait working in here. Again, these 
big tides that we've had been pushing in and out of here is something to be taken in consideration. There's a bunch of shale back up in these areas here, so you don't want to get caught too much into that. But again, majors, minors, key things, key points, they've all been pretty much spot on in and around those time frames when you're looking to catch these fish back up in these areas. Hi, I'm Captain Larry Bell with Texas Fishing Tips, and this is your weekly fishing report.